Good morning, welcome to Springfield Church. We are going to start in about five minutes. Quick enough time to go and grab a coffee, a cup of tea and a biscuit. Um, today's craft we are going to be doing uh, making out love hearts. So if you've got a bit of paper you can cut a love heart out. Other than that, welcome and we'll catch you very soon. Good morning, good morning. Morning. Good morning, everyone. Oh, it's nice and chill today. I like that. It's my kind of service. Welcome to Springfield Church. My name's Luke. I get the joy of leading this service. And we are still in East. I know most of you have probably eaten all your Easter chocolates. Hands up if you've eaten all your Easter chocolates. No. no. Have you not eaten all your Easter chocolates? I know, I know my daughter hasn't, and I'm trying to convince her that I should eat hers, but I'm not getting very far. But... I've eaten most of mine, like the first thing you should do is eat your Easter chocolates and then, and then you discover the rest of Easter. Well Easter's still going on, we are going to have David come up a bit later to talk about it um, and today's theme is, the main theme is always how is, this, how is this love, but the main theme today is life looks like a beach barbecue. Hands up, love, love life, love. We're going, we're going, um, what's his name? Uh, anyway, love looks like a beach barbecue. How many of you have had a beach barbecue? few of you. I've had, I've had a, I had one with, way off topic, but I might as well. I had one with one of those uh, disposable barbecues, and we discovered, sort of towards the end of eating our, our meat, that you could put it in the sea and it'd float perfectly. Um, I, I won't say any more, but if you want to know the rest of the story, there was a quite fun bit at the end there with the seagull, but I'm not going to say any more about that for now, because it's the main service. So we're going to be looking at that. A good place to start is with prayer. I put the book, where have I put the book? 
Oh no, Wendy, I'll put your books on there. Here, yes. Look at that. I'm well prepared this morning. It's fine. It's fine. We're doing fine. Here we go. It's always good to start with prayer, and before the service, we have a team who go over to the Phoenix Centre and pray and see what God has uh, to say to us today. And they've got some words, so I'm going to read these, and then I'm going to say a prayer, and then we're going to start with some worship. And today, as you'll have noticed, there's no worship team, so once I prayed, it's going to be video worship again, so we're going old school again, so be ready for that. But anyway, the words are, maybe feeling on the outside... Uh, inwardly he's working changing us renewing us uh, so God is working inwardly changing us and renewing us Jesus sees each one of us welcomes us whether we are carrying a heavy burden or a light one he invites us to unpack it with him and he will take some away and he will show us how to travel with him uh, someone is in turmoil Jesus uh, uh, Jesus uh, saw yet yeah, is Jesus is the same yesterday today and forever um, and then finally, there's a hidden light. The Lord is doing something. You don't always see it outwardly. So if any of them speak to you, amazing. If not, it's great because God's speaking to us anyway. Let's pray. Jesus, I thank you for today. I thank you that even though we celebrated Easter last Sunday, Easter is still going on, Lord. We thank you for what you have planned for today, for the different things you want to talk to us, Lord. And I just pray that as, as you give those leading your words and as you give those sitting and resting in it, um, time to hear Lord let us just hear what you want us to hear today let us get closer to you in a new way in Jesus name amen if you'd like to stand and join with me as we sing our first song going to be on camera I've got my friend giraffe with me now you might be wondering why well I did put a message out for a rubber mallet and this this is this was our giraffe and it's the best we could get now some of you might be old enough to have heard of Timmy Mallet anyone heard of Timmy Mallet a few of you he did an old school classic game we're gonna try that today because uh, it links in with love it's like a beach barbecue and you might be trying to work out why but don't worry so I need five volunteers. Come on, Ruby, come on, Bella. Come on, Jonah, come on, Bella. Right, there you go, that's it. Sorry, sorry, Pickle, it's the big ones today. Right, who wants to go first? Uh, what have you nerves? 
You go, all right, Bella, come stand here. Jonah, face Bella. It's a very simple game, this. I have a giraffe, not a mallet. I'm going to give Bella a word. You have to say the first word that links to my word. Jonah, you have to say the first word that links to Bella's word. On and on we go until they repeat, hesitate, or just say something that doesn't make any sense. As soon as they say something that doesn't make any sense, Liam the giraffe will hit them hard. But it's a blurb giraffe, it's not gonna hurt. It's fine. It's fine. It's Jaleam. Sorry, I'm being corrected by the name of the giraffe. Very important we get the right name. Jaleam. I'm just gonna call him giraffe. Uh, are you ready? As soon as whoever gets hit on the head, they get replaced by somebody else. It's a very simple system. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you guys ready? Are you ready? Your word is beach. Water. I should do this. Oh, hello. hello. Go on, ocean. Um, volleyball. volleyball. Um, Surfing. Head. 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 Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Ruby. Uh, we are going to start with the word friend. <laughs> that was an easy one. Freeze. Freeze. Final one. Here we go. Let's see who can win. We're going to start with the word forgiveness. Okay, you can take that. You can give it Abby. Thank you. You might be trying to work out what that, that is. David will link it much better than I will later. But it's all about words. It's about the way we respond to each other. And it's like a barbecue. You'll find out more about that later. Right, so now we have... Dun, 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 updates. Uh, so the first update I have is a very lovely update. We have been left some bread by the Seventh Day Amnesty. Uh, uh, seventh, I can't say the words. Them, them lot. Um, the other group you meet here. They've left some bread. It's going to be by the door if you'd like to take some bread. Feel free to take some bread. It's very kind of them to leave bread. I'm, I'm guessing they had a meal here yesterday like they tend to do every month. Um, and so yeah, please feel free to take some bread. We also have, what's the next slide? We have a way of finding your place in the church. We want you to feel involved. We want you to feel connected. Even if you're watching online, we want you to be part of the church and feel connected. The best way to do that is to get involved in one of these ways. Pray first. We have many ways you can pray. You can pray on your own at home. That's totally fine. You can join us on a Sunday morning and pray before the service. You can join us every day of the week other than a Saturday at 9.30 to pray for about 10 to 15 minutes. Loads of different ways you can pray. You can join one of our many groups. You can give regularly or you can find a team. I'm one who loves to try and get people to join the teams because I have lots of teams and I have lots of needs in my teams in order to fulfil them. So there's many ways to get involved. We'd love you to get involved. Uh, and the next slide is today at 7pm. We are going to be praying about what the vision for Springfield is. We have a vision meeting happening very soon for the leadership team. Um, and some of the people, PCC involved and stuff. And we would love to pray tonight to prepare ourselves for that, to see what God wants to say, what God's calling Springfield in the next few years. We've obviously done a lot of change since pre-COVID, which feels like years ago. Uh, it was. Um, <laughs> it was years ago. I've lost many times. Um, and so we want to step forward and see where God's calling us next. So they're gonna, we're going to meet today at 7pm here tonight. We'd love you to come along if you can. Um, but likewise, if you can't, please pray at home at 7, that during the meeting God will really speak and show us where we're going to go from here. Um, I think that's it. I think that's all our slides, isn't it? Sweet. Which means we get to do some more video worship. So if you did want a shaker, our little ones have shakers, but you know, anyone and everyone can have a shaker. It's absolutely fine to get involved. Abigail Rose will pass them out if she, if she can. We'll have some shakers and Jonah can pass them out. There's some big ones as well. I'll grab you in a minute. If you'd like to stand, we'll do a couple more worship songs. Yeah, Abby's got the shakers. I'll get you the big ones.
Okay, so what we're going to do now is um, to carry on having a lot of videos in our service feed. We are going to watch the reading and then David is going to come up and uh, talk to us about it. So, it is not an uh, LO one, this is a different reading. 
So let's watch the let's watch the reading and then I'll hand over to David. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment round him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred meters. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there, with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you have just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153, but even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread, and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. Jesus said, Feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, Take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. at the end of John's Gospel and we pray that you would just open our hearts. Lord, would you take my words and would you anoint them with the fire of your Holy Spirit this morning. Amen. Amen. Great, well it's good to be with my David and the Pioneer Vicar here. Um, I believe we've got sheets for the older ones if you want to grab some sheets that um, allow you to answer some questions about the talk as we go. I don't know if someone could hand those round. Um, maybe these guys over here might want some, hopefully there's some, some sheets. If any of the adults want anything to colour while they're doing then, you know, that's, um, some people find that helpful, so don't be bashful from going over. Um, and if there's, you know, we're all in together, so any, any noises that anyone makes is fine, you know, within reason um, from over here. Um, so. um, but I wonder how many of us here Luke's already been talking about it a little bit. How many of us here are real barbecuers? Who likes, uh, I've got my tongues here. I knew they'd be in the, in the corner over there. People who love their brise. I brought, I brought my barbecue here. This is scenes, I don't know if you can see this here. It's been a long time to set up. Yeah, have a, you know, stand up to it. You know, it folds up, it goes in the car, it's very nice. Um, uh, that's just, you know, so you know what a barbecue looks like if you don't uh, already. Um, but whether you like barbecues or not, I, I personally think that food cooked outside and eaten outside just tastes so much better. And um, I think that Jesus did too. Um, because in the first week after he rose again, and he was always seemed to be eating in the, when he came back, didn't he? I just love that. I'd be the same. It's always, I'm back from the dead, I'm going to eat as much as I can. 
But um, I just think, you know, the fact that on that first week he set up a beach barbecue, that is a divine endorsement of beach barbecues, if ever there was one. So, um, but we've been saying this morning, um, and Luke's already said the thing, that love looks like a beach barbecue. And that is perhaps as odd as saying that love looks like a humble donkey. Um, but we'll get to it. And as you know, we are in our Easter series. We are still celebrating Easter as all of our, um, the lovely uh, display that we've got here shows. And um, we are looking at in this series is how the love of Jesus might be different to the way that the world defines love. And the thing I want us to explore this morning is how courageous and compassionate conversations can lead to forgiveness and friendship. And sorry, I really just like fell off the alliterative cliff there, but you know, there we go. So that's what we're looking at this morning. And in our reading, and we saw it in, in visual form this morning, Jesus created a moment for a courageous and compassionate conversation with Peter over a beach barbecue. But if we look around us, I believe that we are schooled in the opposite of forgiveness and friendship. I wonder for you, how many times, and maybe think in the last few months, how many times in the last few months have we had a falling out with someone, where we've maybe had a painful misunderstanding? How often do we just cut off from someone in our heart because they hurt us? How many of us still carry around unforgiveness and resentment for someone or something that happened a long time ago? And what does the world around us tell us to do in situations like this? The world tells us that we have a right to feel these things, that we have a right to be mean about that person behind their back, that we can cancel them, that we can write them off. A crack is formed and then we never cross it. But how is this working out for us as a society? Well, we are on the brink of climate collapse. We have two major wars taking place right now, many other conflicts across the world. The reasons are complex, of course, but they stem often from a desire to get our own way instead of reaching out in forgiveness and reconciliation. But Jesus modeled for us and made a way for us to live a different way in the breathtaking relief of forgiveness and friendship. Why don't we just take a deep breath in to experience that breathtaking relief if uh, you want to. So if you recall from our Bible account that we just um, watched, before this Peter had really messed up. You may recall this story. Peter had denied that he knew Jesus because he was scared. I wonder if you've ever not stood up for someone, maybe even Jesus, because you were scared. And when John writes of this denial moment a few chapters back in chapter 18, it says that the household servants and the guards had made a charcoal fire and Peter stood with them. I wonder if that detail has ever jumped out at you before. It is not an accident. Peter denied Jesus beside a charcoal fire. And then fast forward to after his death and resurrection, and what does Jesus do? The exact same words, he makes a charcoal fire. And I believe he does this to create space for a conversation with Peter, prepares for an intentional conversation. Peter would have been holding that moment heavy on his heart. And Jesus would have known that the sights and the smells of the barbecue would transform him back to that moment. And in doing so, he was leaning in to the relationship. Jesus was not casual about it. In verse 9 of chapter 29, it says, When they got there, they found breakfast waiting for them, fish cooking over a charcoal fire and some bread. Jesus, the Son of God, back from the dead, had carefully prepared a beach barbecue takes preparations, you've got to have your right tools. But what does this show us when we've fallen out with someone at school, 
when we feel like a family member has let us down or a colleague has not respected us or a neighbour has been rude. I wonder if any of us have experienced those things recently. Well, I believe that Jesus calls us to carefully create a good conversation. What might be our equivalent of a beach barbecue? Part of the preparation is often dealing with our stuff first, before God, and not just seeing it as an opportunity to blame the other person. We ask God if there's anything that we need to say sorry for that it might have contributed to it. Then it's good to prayerfully consider the best time to speak to them in an unrushed moment, where you can have space to listen well to one another. But this is not easy because obviously we're only one side of it and the other person might not be responsive. I totally get that. But if love looks like a beach barbecue, then it's always our job to try and create one, no matter how hard that seems. Because Jesus forgives all of our mess and calls us to forgive others too. But that doesn't mean that we avoid conflict or direct conversations. Now, after Jesus created space, he then takes the opportunity to speak to Peter directly. It says in verse 15, After breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Jesus leans in in his own special way. He brings up the issue between him and Peter. Now, Jesus does speak in a rather coded way here, and because he's Jesus, he can do that. We might want to be a little bit clearer, otherwise we might lead to more misunderstandings, but hopefully you get the point. But we do have to follow Jesus' example to speak to the person that we have the issue with instead of everyone else. I didn't hear Jesus just whispering to all the other disciples, can you believe what Peter did? And so I, I, I really want to be real about this with all of us, because this is hard. And I think we all get this wrong all the time, I do. But when someone hurts us, how often do we mention it in outrage to someone else, rather than speaking to the person who hurt us? And we can couch it in Christian terms and we can even be like praying about it sometimes. But it, it's really just the same thing. We're offloading to someone else. I'm not saying it's wrong to not seek advice, but in order to take it to that person eventually, we speak to anyone apart from the person we have the issue with. Now I get that we want to try as much as possible to overlook offenses let it go. But let's be honest when we can't. Because if we don't go to the person, the reality is that the devil loves to stir up gossip behind people's backs. And it undermines Jesus' love and weakens us as a community of faith. And I think this approach to avoidance can come from a misunderstanding about conflict that it is always bad. We may have been brought up to believe that. As Christians, we can often think that being forgiving is to be conflict avoidant. But it's not the conflict that's bad, it's our avoidance of it. And that leads to misunderstanding, mistrust, and ultimately broken relationships. I know many of us have experienced that. And I am surprised that even in Christian context, this can seem countercultural. When I was doing my vicar training a little while ago, one of our tutors, we had one of those tutors, and he would say hurtful things quite often in lectures. People were always complaining about him. Even trainee vicars were doing that. Can you believe it? One day, I was in a lecture, and he said some, something hurtful about a service that I'd been involved with. And then afterwards, people were saying, can you believe he said that? Now, I absolutely can't claim to always get this right. But in this situation, I decided that I would go and see him. And so I nervously tapped on his study door. And I sat down. And I tentatively, 
but directly shared why what he said was hurtful to me. And I shared why I'd experienced it that way. And you know what? He didn't bosh me on the head like that, giraffe. Because that's what I thought was going to happen. I thought I was just going to... And that's often why we don't do it, right? He was gracious. He listened. He said sorry. He sought to make it right. And that was a huge moment. I was so surprised, but it meant that when people complained to me about this tutor again, I was able to say, look, don't share it with me. If you've got an issue, I've spoke to, I spoke to him about something. He was really open. I think you will find he is open too. Why don't you just go and speak to them? Now, not everyone is going to be a good receiver of a direct conversation. I get that. But the interesting thing is that day, my relationship with this tutor changed. And it became one built on trust and respect. Because he knew I wasn't going to be one of those people dissing him behind his back. If I had an issue, I would go to him. Look, friends, Jesus' teaching on this is really, really clear. In Matthew 18, it says this. If another believer sins against you, go privately and point out the offence. Do you notice that word privately? But if the other person and if the other person listens and confesses it, you have won that person back. But if you are unsuccessful, take one or two others with you and go back again, so that everything you say may be confirmed by two or three witnesses. And then Jesus says, only after you've done that do you release them, having done all you can do. But it seems that we normally just jump to that end option straight away without doing the other two and just dismiss and release them. And Jesus says, you know, the second stage, it's totally fine if we need to get another person to help us or another one or two people, maybe a friend, a group leader, to make a conversation safe. But let's please lean in to these beach barbecue moments. Because the final thing that Jesus shows us here is he starts where Peter is at. Now, it's hard to see from the English, but I know some of you already know that there is more than one word in the Greek for love. And we have two of these words now. I can see some of you smiling. Oh, I know that. I know that already. Agape and filio. Okay? So we have agape, a self-giving, godly love, and then filio, a friendship, love, friendship love. And the first two times Jesus says to Peter, Simon, do you love me more than these? He uses that agape word. But each time Peter replies, he says, yes, Lord, you know I filio love you. You know that I'm your friend. And then the third time Jesus asks, Simon, do you love me more than these? And the amazing thing is Jesus joins Peter with the filio word. Now, there's all sorts of things that you might read into this, but what I want us to look at this morning is that Jesus joins him with that word, and it's like he's saying, okay, if you can't yet love me with a self-giving love, I will start where you're at, with friendship love. Jesus is seeking reconciliation, not trying to assert his rights. And yet later in the passage we see that Jesus shows that belief that he will eventually find that self-giving love by dying for Jesus. Jesus doesn't push his agenda, he starts where Peter is at. I wonder how we might enter into direct conversations in that way. So, if we have got to the point where we have created a safe space for a direct conversation, a beach barbecue moment, and it's important that wrongs are acknowledged, but where also might we be able to start where the people, start where that person is at? to recognize that compromise might be the loving thing to do. But another thing that I found helpful in relation to this is to ask ourselves, what is our default natural response in conflict? Some of us avoid it wherever we can. 
And so we need some courage. So like the, uh, the, the, the lion in Wizard of Oz, get some courage. Others of us, and we know who we are, we like to wade in. We, we like to say it as it is. <laughs> but that can sometimes be an excuse for just saying mean things. I just say what I think, but it just, it's just an excuse for saying mean things. It can be. Okay? We need a bit of compassion. I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not saying anyone in particular. You know who you are. <laughs> okay? So we need both compassion and courage. Just some of us need it in different measures. And let's remember, we are all human, okay? We all mess up, we hurt people. I think we can agree on that, right? And if we can't, you can have a direct conversation with me later. <laughs> well, although I am off on holiday next week, so... <laughs> yeah, yeah, conflict avoidant. Um, now, of course we're worried that if we bring something up with someone, we're going to get a bosh on the head with a giraffe. But that's why we need to grow as a community together, as we grow in journeying in this way. Let us honestly, but carefully and gently share how a situation made us feel, not telling the other person all that they've done wrong. Where we genuinely seek forgiveness so we can be reconciled with one another. And of course, we remember that we can't change the other person, only God can do that. But Paul tells us as far as it's reliance on you, to live at peace with one another. We can only do our part. And of course, we may need to remove ourselves from an abusive relationship and get help in that kind of situation. Don't hear me saying any of this is an excuse for bad behavior or forcing someone to forgive you. That's, hopefully you know that's not my heart. But the good news is, the good news of Easter is that the only route to forgive one another is through Jesus. He sacrificed himself on the cross, the ultimate act of agape love, and rose again on Easter Sunday so that he can forgive us and that forgiveness can flow through us to others. So my prayer this morning is that we will be able to grow in the love of Jesus, believing the best in one another as we seek to create spaces for beach barbecue direct conversations while recognizing we all mess up and seeking reconciliation above being right. And under all this, remember that the forgiveness of Jesus is real and it needs to flow through us. So that's where I'd like to close. I could say so much more on this topic, but that's where I just want to say for now. And I would like us to pray the Lord's Prayer together. And particularly just to be intentional about the middle part where it says, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. That we can flow in that forgiveness. So we've got those words up. So let's just take a moment to pause. Lord God, as we say these words, with the truth of your forgiveness, just penetrate our hearts once again. Thank you that you have made a way for us to live in reconciliation with you as our Father and with those around us. Lord, we pray particularly for situations and relationships that we find really tough. Lord, I pray that you would show us a way. So let's say it together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm going to hand over to Luke. I believe we've got some...
some questions that we can use for reflection and uh, craft as well. Thank you, David. So, in your groups, um, in your seats, in your groups, yeah, same thing. Um, turn around, have a chat about these three questions. We have a craft uh, for those who want to be crafty. However, I made a small mistake, and so you've got to make the craft work. So it's a challenge craft now, rather than the simple craft it was originally. Um, and we're going to have a song playing in the background for about five, five, ten minutes. Um, and then when the song sort of fades out, we'll come back together, do a final stand-up worship, and then we can all go off for our Sunday lunch. So, chat with those around you, and um, if you want to try a, a challenge craft, come over here.
Brilliant, brilliant. If you want to try and bring your conversations to a close for a minute, you can carry on chatting after the service. That is allowed. We've got teas and coffees as well. So that is okay. The little ones are going to carry on making a lovely mess over here, so that's all gravy. What we're going to do now is we're going to have one final song of worship, and then I get to say God bless and goodbye. So let's all stand and, if you want to, stand and sing the final song.
Jesus, I thank you, God, that you are a God who wants to be in us, uh, with us in all situations, Lord. You want to be near us and in all situations that we're in. I pray, God, that as we go out here from today, Lord, you'll remind us that even when we make mistakes, even when we're struggling to, to know what to say, you're there alongside us, you're giving us the words, you're showing us how to show your true forgiveness, your true friendship. And just like uh, in the story, Lord, you are there ready, preparing a way for us helping us do it. So help us today uh, see those situations in a new light and in a new, situa in a new way and step forward into the uh, new friendships and new forgiveness that you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We are here tonight again for prayer. Please do join us if you can. Other than that, we are back on next week, normal time. Kids groups are back on again next week. Um, so we won't be as manic as it is today, but I kind of like the manic, it's my kind of style. It's more fun having them running around. And generally it's my kids who are doing it as well, it's even better. Um, go and enjoy your Sunday afternoon, enjoy the lovely sun, have a cup of coffee before you go, and we will see you all next week hopefully. God bless. <laughs>